Hi everyone, welcome back to a brand new Football Tourist Guide and welcome to all you new subscribers as well. We've got quite a few, so I really appreciate that because I'm trying to build this into its own thing. But I've moved all the Football Tourist Guides, the old ones now, from Lee Charles TV onto this channel. So these from now on are brand new. They're kind of the lost ones really because I was frustrated last year with it all because I just felt that the Football Tourist Guide videos were getting lost under all the other match day vlogs. So they've now got their own space. They're now on here and this is, as I say, one of those that uh, I did last season and I've just never got round to it. It's just been like a, a writer's block with me really. So hope you enjoy this one. It's our trip to Sunderland. If your team are playing Sunderland and you fancy making a weekend of it when you follow your team, then let me, let me show you the kind of things that Jane and I got up to and the kind of things that you can do when you go to Sunderland. So let me show you. Morning. Morning. Oh, it's early, isn't it? <laughs> it is, but I'm feeling good. I'm excited about today. I'm really looking forward to exploring Sunderland, so let's get going. First stop was the Northeast Land, Sea and Air Museum because Jane had discovered that they had an exhibition of old Blackpool trams. She couldn't wait to see them, so let me show you that. Destination reached. Destination reached. Well done out there. Well done. I'll be ready for the next mission. Cheers, Just Mike. wake me when you need me. Wake me up before you go, go. We've come to the Northeast Land, Sea and Air Museum, which is shortened to Nell Sam. Uh, we're about to find out what else there is. Hoping to see Blackpool fans. Wow, this is not our first Vulcan bomber. And there's nobody here to tell us about this one, though, is there? There we are, look at the size of those compared. <laughs> in we go. Sleeping one of these actually, yeah. Yeah, we, we were up a bit early. When you're in a museum, you always meet really interesting museum guides and Chris in this museum was was a, so eccentric and so amazing. So let me show you how what he told us about the planes there. This is the American F-84. This one here? Yeah, they were nicknamed the Thunderstreaks. They were jet powered, had four cannons, and could carry nuclear bombs. They were a development of the American F-84 Thunder jet. This one had a nasty accident. It crashed somewhere and um, damaged its wings permanently, so I'm afraid this thing will never fly again. English Electric Lightning has two engines, one at the top and one at the bottom. And as one interesting feature, it had fuel tanks at the top of the wings, the Hawker Hunter. During an air show, there was a disaster, and, there, and this aircraft compensated the air show by going beyond the speed of sound. So amazing airplanes, aren't they? Really are. But there was so much more than planes, as you can see. Oh, what, what's in there? Oh, there's a man on the toilet oh. reading a paper. <laughs> oh, <cool. laughs> oh, look, he's got paper in his toilet roll as well. Oh, gosh, yeah. all the Blackpool Heritage trams in this museum. Uh, Jane was absolutely fascinated with it all. I'm in the cockpit of a tornado. There's not a lot of room. It's pretty tight in here, I've got to say. Oh, what a great museum this is. In the cockpit of one of those. So, yeah, so it's pretty tight, I've got to say. There's not a great deal of room. 
To believe you could flame one of these. That was an old fighter flame. Oh my gosh. It's got like uh, cloth wings or something, hasn't it? Wow, that's amazing. What a beauty that is. That's in really good nick as well, isn't it? Yeah, that's like brand new. Is this one, Jake? Oh. Next up was the Penshaw Monument. Taking a slight detour, we're going to the Penshaw Monument. We are, yes. We're actually going to be out in four minutes. It's one of the wonders of the world, I believe. Is it? Or something like that. One of the seven in one line. One, one of the seven wonders of the left. Durham. It's go to <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Ronnie from Hartlepool, who's told us about this. Steve Frosty. Ronnie from Hartlepool. Yeah. I'm King Ronnie. Take the third exit. Stay frosty. Stay frosty, Mike. This is Mike, I was sat now. Yes, this is Mike. Oh, look, yes, there it is. Penshaw Monument. Wow, so I can get up there. To the right? Yeah. Mike will take us. Turn right. Turn so, right. Mm -hmm. Destination reached. Well done, Hunter. Yeah. Oh, 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 I'll be ready for the next mission. Oh, one look at that. Hi everyone, we're just going to make our way up to the Penshaw Monument. Or the Earl of Durham Monument. It's actually on the Sunderland uh, Badge as well, and I've never even heard of it. But, uh, it's nearly 200 years old. 200 years old. It looks like something from, you know, it looks like something from Greece from far yeah, away. it's based on that. It's quite a walk up to this, folks. God, I'll tell you what an amazing thing is. Chain there, so what an amazing thing this is! We've got the Blackpool weather with us, haven't we? As well as the Blackpool tram. <laughs> we have, yeah. We then travelled into Sunderland to get some lunch and found this amazing restaurant, which was an old fire station converted into a restaurant. Absolute eye candy. Just check this out. Another um, yeah, it's a bridge, yeah? It's a railway bridge, what you say? It's a railway. We're making our way for some lunch to park the car. Yeah, nice little houses where look like where the probably the vicar lived, just, just across from the minster, which was uh, there. And here we are going for lunch. Nice bit of a wonky sign. Right, in we go into the fire station. Uh, oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah. Wow. It's toasty as well. God, that's impressive, isn't it? That's beautiful. Yeah, you can tell it's an old fire station. Yeah, how cool is that? Okay. So get a pump fix here. Yeah. They are quite nice chairs, aren't they? Wow, this is just everything about this one. We've got Paddington there, I think he's looking after us for one. Yeah, he's going to make sure I eat healthily. What do you think of this? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, settle here now. <laughs> so you're having you're having the same as me, yeah? Yeah, well, it's salmon, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Paddington's keeping an eye on Jane then. So I'm on the uh, the salmon as well, that looks really, really nice. So next up, we went to the Winter Gardens where there was actually dinosaurs, and as we know, Jane loves a dinosaur. And see it fly, right? Okay. Oh, yeah, it's Oh, yeah. There's a 
Dat is toch vang, is dat? Oh, dat is dan niet zo uit, hè? Oh. Oh, well, Jane, if you've got dinosaurs, Sunderland's a winner. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, yeah. Yeah, it looks like a uh, indoor water. Next, we stayed at a hotel on the seafront near Roca Pier called the Roca Hotel, which was fabulous. Yeah, yeah, look there, it says Roca Hotel oh, no. Parking, oh, just how we are, there's a lion to greet us. Oh, this is rather cool, isn't it? Look at these. Oh, it's tree-lined. Wowee. We're going posh tonight. Welcome to the Hayward Party. Why, since that's uh, one of the bars here. Make a U-turn. Let's go finish this fight. Sunderland's got a little marina by the docks. I don't know what that says. Yeah, it's not time, it's not a trick. Half an hour walk. Yeah, we've not? got quite a lot to do sort of around this sort of area, haven't we? So yeah, let's have a walk. This is the Fans Museum. Oh, yeah. As you know, we're, we're, a, we're a museum. It's not just for Sunderland, it's for all Sunderland, but of course. There is a lot of fun, some look stuff yeah, here. Cool. Just have a wander around. I go through. There's a bar open through there. Okay. Right. Uh, there should be somebody behind it. What's your name? Dave. Dave. Cheers, Dave. Thank you very much. Well, look around. Thank you. Well, I hope I'm getting this right. Yeah, there, well, there was a corner and it got knocked yeah. down to um, Ian Porterfield. Came to him on his wrong foot. Yeah. And he smashed it. Oh. And, uh, as you can see, yeah. nothing Leeds could do about no, it. Two on the line as well, want the two yeah. on each post. Yeah. Keeper. <laughs> and it stayed at 1 0. Yeah. And you were second division then, were you? Yeah, 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 so. yeah we I were. Can't near, remember that. Me at the bottom of the second division when Bob Stoko took over. Wow. Oh, well, we had Stoko. Ah, oh, that's that's the connection. It yes. wasn't probably there. Yeah. Yeah. Was. yeah, it's the it's from the boardroom at Roker Park. So that's Bob Stoko's jacket. Yeah, he just sat there and, well, I think that was, yeah, that was special for 73. Right, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, they're just saying that Sunderland are kind of stuck in 73 like we're stuck in 53 for our football. 53, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Before my time. Was yeah. Oh, was that yeah. Before mine as well. Yes. Matthew, well, it was, a, it was a Matthews final, but Morty scored the hat trick, so. Yeah, and uh, I've loved to see the fans of that. When is Kevin Phillips going to come in the Manchester? If only Gary Taylor Fletcher hadn't got injured at Wembley, he'd have come on the super sub. This is really built with all this place. Oh, I like the cold Stuart. Old turnstiles. I highly recommend that actually, did you? What? Highly recommend a visit the to Fans that. Museum, yeah, very good, yeah, definitely. It's, if you're a football fan. Yeah, you'll love it. it. It's predominantly Sunderland, but there's loads of football stuff that's yeah. really good. Jane is the editor of the Blackpool fanzine and she wanted to go and see the Sunderland fanzine cafe. Take water, it's not like a 
Yeah, well, I'm doing four a season, so yeah. Well, I'll buy one, really. Have you got, have you got change? Oh, oh short bread jam sandwich, basically, with ice on top. World famous. That's a famous pink slime. <laughs> You're in your elements here. Oh yeah, there's three I want. Yeah? What do you want? I want well they've got their own stout, which I've got to have obviously because it's theirs. They yeah. brewed it, uh, oatmeal stout. They've also got um, Cherry Sour from Wild Weather, which is one of my favourite breweries. And then they've got a, a nice sort of table beer, two and a half percent lemon beer from Brew York, who I like. Wow, so which is the one you said you want? The other one. That one back right there, that Wild Weather, Cherry Sour. I thought that was going to stay for like. I'm Les. You've got to excuse me, we'll move a lot of stuff back here for the match days, so a lot of. Business yeah. has migrated to the brewery. Right, okay, so this is the brewery, yeah? This is the brewery. Very this is small, mate. You know, Vaux was a, traditionally a, you know, it's a Victorian brewery. It was a. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, they used to sponsor Blackpool shirts. That's right, so, that's right, of course. That's, well, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm from Newcastle, I'm a Newcastle United supporter, yeah. but it's always a bit uh, okay, all controversial, right. but I, I, I'm very happy being there, <laughs> brother Vaux. Yeah, as I say that. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Gabe. Um, yeah. so, so it's pretty straightforward. So I mean, very small five barrel kit at the moment. Right, okay. So quite, uh, I wish I'd given the face. So I've literally just had a super busy day. So no, apologies right. if not more tidy. Mash tons over here. The mash tons are, yeah. That's what hot liquor tank. Yeah. Copper. Okay. Uh, that's a, a CT actually. So, yeah. metal vessels. Right. You know, we've only got four. We have the double brew to fill one. So, right. two days to fill one tank. Right, okay. Um, so the process of making a beer, you put yeah. your hops and stuff in. No, 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 not hops. No, okay. So you mash your grain in there, so that's basically right. like in the most simple way possible. You're mixing yeah. grain with warm water, yeah. temperature depend, depending on what you want. Yeah. Uh, the enzymes that were going to help the plant grow, right. they'll start cleaving starches and turning them into sugar. Right. That sugar later on in the process will ferment. But for now, we're just sort of what we call sparging, so we're rinsing that grain. Pulling all those sugars out that the enzymes have chopped up. Right, okay. We'll collect that liquid in the copper. Um, yeah. Quite old fashioned, I call it a copper, some people call it a brew kettle. Okay. Um, and basically, in there, it gets boiled. The boiling will sterilize it, which is really, really good. Yeah. And, you know, we'll add hops and other ingredients at this point, which will sort of impart different flavors. Bitterness, famously, really comes from hops and okay. you know, quite a bit of kettle character can come from right. there. Once it's been boiled, yeah. it gets transferred through heat exchanger, so it gets cooled to fermentation temperature. So if you imagine it was, you know, 100 degrees C, yeah. we'll bring it down to 20 generally, depending on the yeast, but you know, 20 is a good, yeah. easy middle ground. Right. Pop it into an FV, right. add the yeast, so then those sugars, which we'd previously chopped up from the starch, Got it. the yeast starts working on those, yeah. and it, luckily it excretes CO2 and uh, ethanol. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. that, that process takes, you know, depending anything from three days to kind of yeah, yeah, so uh, take longer than others. Yeah, depending on strength and style. Yeah, and, you know. A certain beer at one time, then another beer, and a different beer on another day. Yeah, we keep yeah we keep it all separate. Like uh, every recipe is an individual recipe. No, you know, we I know some people would brew the same beer and maybe dry hop differently or something like that. Right. Every recipe we have is a unique and independent recipe. Right. Not for any. Yeah, fantastic. We've been sat here at, at Vox Beers and we're on a diet, we can't have these pizzas, but they look amazing. If you get a chance to have one of these... They smell amazing as well. <laughs> they do, they been do. Having them. <laughs> How long have you been here? Because I saw you painting the uh, sign. Three weeks. Oh, yeah, three weeks, yeah. So okay. we've got a place in Seam, which is just right. down the coast. Yeah. And uh, we're just starting setting up here, so we're just getting the name out and getting known. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, honestly, they look amazing. Yeah, thank you. And they smell amazing. We've yeah. just... I've just been eating them in there. <laughs> yeah, we've just been in Vox yeah, beers. We're, we're on Instagram, slice.sunnund. What are you on? On Instagram? Instagram, yeah, slice.sunnund. Oh. Okay. Alright, cheers. Oh, yeah, yeah, on the last day before we left, Jane had been told that you might be able to see dolphins off the end of Roca Pier. So let's go find out if we did.
There we are, we're getting close to the lighthouse. Uh, quite a long pier actually, it does stretch a long way. Almost there. Oh, it's got a thing on the top showing you what direction it's pointing. By the vein. Right to the end. Well, before we set off, uh, Jane wanted to come down here to the end of the pier to see if we could see any dolphins, didn't we? Because apparently there's dolphins apparently at the Apparently it's a thing, yeah. But I can't see any today. No. But there's lots of nice bird life. <laughs> Bye. Hope you've really enjoyed this video and if you have please give the video a like and also if you haven't yet subscribed please do we're trying to build this channel so there's a little button there you can just click on that if you want to see more of the football tourist guides there is the whole playlist is just there and if you'd like to see how blackpool got on against sunderland in the game there's a link to the match video just there thanks a lot for watching i will see you in the next one